Today, we're gonna to use Fusion 360 and my Prusen SL1S resin printer to make screw boxes to keep your shop really well organized. So in Fusion 360, got a brand new file. First thing I wanna do is before I draw anything is set some parameters. So we're gonna do a new user parameter and we're gonna call this width. And let's just say this is three inches. Doesn't matter yet. Okay, another user parameter, let's say depth, and let's say this is two inches. Doesn't matter yet, okay? One more for height, and then let's just say one inch, okay. So now we have our parameters, we're gonna hit okay. We're going to create a new sketch. We're gonna do it from the top plane, and we're going to draw a center rectangle out here we can choose, instead of putting in numbers in this sketch, we're gonna use the parameters that we set. So we're gonna do depth here. Then for this, we're gonna use width. Okay. Now we can grab that plane and pull it up. And we're gonna pull it up to our height that we set. There we go. I just realized I need one more parameter and that is going to be the wall thickness. And let's just say that is 1 16th of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna select the top part of my box and I'm going to choose shell. And now I can pull this in and it's going to make a shell. And once again, I'm gonna use my parameter of thickness and there we go. There is a super simple box. Now I can save this file and I can come back to it. And now I can print any size box that I want by just going up to the parameters here. And let's say I want the width to be four inches. It automatically updates the file. I want the depth to be one inch. Automatically updates the file. And I can change the thickness to 0.25 for a super thick, heavy boy, and then there we go. That's one of the amazing things about Fusion 360 is you can just update your numbers here and it updates the file. That's parametric. I think they call that parametric. I don't know. I don't care about terms. I just need to know what I need to know. I am making little screw boxes for this particular drawer for all of my screws and nails and various hardware that I use quite a bit. I have the parameters that I need to continue making bins for that drawer. I'm going to punch them into the parameters here. The width is 2.25, the depth is 3.438, the height is 1.9, and then the thickness is 0 0.065. Hit OK. That updates our file right here. I'm gonna select the body, go over to Utilities, click on 3D Print, and choose my 3D printer, which is Prusa. I'm gonna hit OK. This opens up into Prusa Slicer, which is also a free program just like Fusion 360. And I'm gonna change the orientation here. It dropped it on there sideways, which makes sense, but not for my particular case. So I'm gonna rotate it. Drop it down and then rotate it this way. There we go. Prusa has different settings. These are the defaults. These got ultra detail, normal, and fast. I don't need a lot of detail for these bins, so I'm gonna go fast. And you can dive into all of the, those parameters and change every little bit that you want. I'm not good with that stuff, so I just use the presets. You select your material, and then you select your printer, and we want no supports and no padding for this particular piece. I'm gonna hit slice now. It's thinking, it's, and there we go. And that is our print. I can see exactly what it's gonna do layer by layer. So from here, I can hit export. I'm gonna save that to my thumb drive and call it box, box. So here's my Prusa SL1S. We'll open this up. I'm gonna stick the thumb drive 
in there. And if I hit print, and then it's gonna show all the files on that thumb drive. There's our box box. I'm gonna load that up. And then it's giving, it's telling me it's gonna take 45 minutes to print this, how many layers, blah, 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 stuff I don't care about. I'm gonna slide over and it says, please fill the resin tank to at least 50% and then close the lid. So resin is toxic. So wear gloves and shake well. I'm gonna pour this in there. And there we go. I'm gonna close the lid and hit print. So it's exposing the first layer. It uses an LED screen on the bottom there to cure that resin with UV light. The first couple layers takes a little bit longer to expose a little bit longer so it sticks to the build plate. But then after it gets past the first two, it goes pretty fast. So we just let this sit and do its thing. There's a screen in there shining UV light that cures the resin and exposes that for a little bit. And then this gantry moves up a tiny little bit, does the next layer and just keeps doing that. So, so the piece is actually going to pull out of the resin. So we'll see you in 45 minutes. It looks like it is done. So I can take this off, pull this out and we have our box. Now we can wash this off with some rubbing alcohol and then set it out in the sun to cure. Or you can get a washing and curing station. Not necessary, it just makes life a little bit easier. So this can go on here. Uh, a little agitator down there and magnets are gonna make that agitator spin around. So I can drop this in here, put the lid on, close it, and hit wash. And now it's gonna wash for four minutes. So once that is done, we can pull that out of there. Probably should use tongs. Wipe off the excess alcohol. And instead of setting that in the sun, this tank comes out. And I can set this on here, give it a UV bath. It's got curing on there. So I'll hit okay. And then just let that cure for 10 minutes. And that should be done. So we pull this out of there, head on over to our drawer, throw in the screws and put it back in there. 